is this museum here? And what stories does it tell? Lincoln Gardens is a lens through which to glimpse the makings of modern America. <laughs> Welcome to the Evansville African American Museum. A description of an early French outpost proves that people of African descent have been in Indiana since at least 1746. A new settlement has 45 inhabitants, of which five are black slaves. Indiana's 1816 admission to the Union encouraged migration of free blacks into the new state. Evansville's first black citizen, a horseshoer or farrier, arrived in 1820. While the frontier was hostile to all settlers, African-American pioneers faced more than their share of danger as white Hoosiers viewed blacks with everything from suspicion to outright hatred. The most notorious display of anti-black sentiment was a clause in the 1851 state constitution designed to prohibit further African-Americans' immigration to Indiana. Still, the Ohio River was the dividing line between slavery and the hope of freedom, and the Evansville home of Willard Carpenter, a wealthy white man, was an underground railroad stop. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Indiana was home to more than 10,000 blacks. The bloody war finally ended, but most former slaves couldn't afford to leave the South. Still with few resources other than courage and determination, more and more African Americans moved north in search of a brighter future. In Evansville, free blacks and fugitive slaves had founded Liberty Baptist Church as the Civil War was ending. This church became the heart of a quickly growing neighborhood that local whites soon dubbed Baptist Town. The rising African-American population and the segregation of the races created a ready-made clientele for Black-owned businesses, including restaurants, hotels, funeral parlors, nightclubs, and stores. This trend also created jobs that were rarely open to African-Americans in white-owned businesses. Meanwhile, in Indianapolis, Madam C.J. Walker began manufacturing beauty supplies and became one of the first African-American millionaires. The Great Depression brought equal opportunity misery, but Blacks were disproportionately afflicted by unemployment and inadequate housing. And while the entire nation struggled, Evansville also faced a catastrophic natural disaster. January 1937, a record-breaking flood swamped Evansville, completely washing away low-lying African-American neighborhoods. When the waters receded, muddy silt covered much of the city and black community organizations mobilized to assist with relief efforts. However, Baptist Town was hit so hard, its real estate market never recovered. Determined to rescue Americans from the Depression, President Franklin Roosevelt devised <coughs> economic recovery programs, like the Public Works Administration, or PWA, charged with constructing affordable housing projects. Of the PWA's 51 developments, Two were in Indiana, both for African-American tenants. Lockville Garden Apartments in Indianapolis and Lincoln Gardens in Evansville. Construction began on Lincoln Gardens in 1936, and the complex officially opened July 1, 1938. Compared to the other options available to most of Evansville's African-Americans, Lincoln Gardens was an excellent opportunity, and it soon became the center of a thriving neighborhood. However, war loomed. As America rallied to fight the Nazis, the Evansville shipyard entered the booming defense industry. By executive order, President Roosevelt required that war plants be colorblind in their harm, but the negative attitudes of white workers minimized the opportunity for African Americans. Nevertheless, Lincoln Gardens residents made significant contributions to the war effort including establishing a USO for black military personnel who were discriminated against elsewhere. Black citizens returned from war. The integrated armed forces had given them new expectations. Better training and education plus participation in union activity helped develop a new kind of African-American leader in politics and civil rights. The boom years that followed World War II were a heyday for Lincoln Gardens, then 1959 Civil Rights Housing Act signaled the end of an era. African Americans here and across the country moved toward new opportunities from local housing to international leadership. 
During your visit today, get to know the people of Lincoln Gardens and explore how their stories relate to your own. Welcome. Enjoy your tour.